Hey everyone, we've got out of the city for a while, we've come out for the day in a place called Tabio, which is 35 kilometres north of Bogota, and meeting my corn just now. We're heading to Natural Springs, so should be fun. It's quite a nice day, so should be fun. Try and take some clips when I'm there. Speak to you soon. I need to show the mountains apparently. Yep, so we're going down to the very bottom here, you can see it. So much nicer being here than being in the city. Well, so much for showing you the hot springs. We went in and we, we, went, we had to put our bags in the locker room and the locker room queue was massive. It was like, what do like 20 minutes or so. And, and then the camera was in, so it was a pain in the ass to try and get it back out. And, so I just left it, but I'll quickly show you. This is the hot springs, there's basically two pools. The people that are waiting around, there's people waiting for saunas and there's people waiting for jacuzzis, but apart from that, there's no waiting around. Quite crowded, but not too bad. And it was only at 14,000 pesos, so like, what's that, like three pounds, three pounds fifty? Six dollars or something, very cheap. So we're going to head off for lunch now, and that's where we're going for lunch, just a little cafeteria there. And it's about two and a half, three hours to get back, so it's quite a long journey for only spending a couple of hours here, but it's worth it just to get out of the city, because you get sick of all the traffic and pollution. <laughs> when you actually get into the main part of Colombia, it's beautiful. So here I am, just sitting down to my lunch after being in the hot springs. And eating as a vegetarian in South America is always difficult, always difficult. I became vegetarian two years, three months ago, when I was in Paraguay and I've had problems throughout traveling South America and Colombia is bad for it. I mean, the, South America is a, a continent that eats meat. So it's always difficult to try and explain to them, no, I don't want any meat in the food. The soup's got meat in it, and a lot of the time, you know, I can't, I can't order the, the the special lunch because it's always meat. And you think you could just say, well, I'll have the the lunch special, but just no meat. But it doesn't seem to work like that. So in this in this lunch, what I've had to do is just say, well, order all the portions separate and put it in the same plate. So I've got chips and patacon, rice and frijoles. But unfortunately, that's what I have to do as a vegetarian. So it's, it's sometimes a challenge. Sometimes you have to eat really terrible food, you know, when everyone else is sitting down, they have delicious lunch, you're kind of sitting eating chips or rice and that's it because there's nothing else there for you. But it's just what you have to deal with. It's not an issue back home, you know, back in home in Scotland, there's vegetarian options, every restaurant and all that. Loads of vegetarian meals in, in supermarkets, but when you come here, you're really fighting against it. Anyway, better get to lunch. Just walking back after having a lunch. Now I'm somebody that's not. I'm not very fussy. I don't. I don't mind. Why eat in restaurants? I'm very rarely. A, I've never sent anything back in my life in a restaurant. I've never complained or anything like that. When people or other people complain about food. I'm normally quite content. I just go whatever. But that meal was. That was terrible. Uh, came with a little orange juice which was warm and disgusting. The rice that I had was... The, yeah, to be honest, food as well. The rice that I had was a little bit lukewarm, but the chips were freezing, the beans were freezing, and the plantain was freezing as well. I sort of suspected that this was going to happen because we were standing there before, ordering the food, and there's hardly anyone in the restaurant. And the guy, the guy who was taking the order, was just getting stressed, like he was getting so stressed. The woman came through from the the kitchen and she was asking him to do something. And he was like, he was like, I'm concentrating, I'm concentrating. He was like, you're just talking to us very, he was just getting stressed. So yeah, the guy was just getting stressed and stressed and stressed. And it was weird because there was no one there. You know, it was 
very relaxed. That should have been a warning sign. We walked out. Joanne actually says to him, like the free holidays were all Basically, the beans were really cold, and he was just like, yeah. He must know because people go there. You know, it's not, it's not a place people go all the time. People arrive in buses and they go, and I assume many people go and never go back. So he doesn't care, you know, he's got a monopoly. Ha, okay, update. Apparently they were cold because it was the last ones of the day, the last food of the day. Don't understand why he didn't, he just heat it up for two minutes. Anyway, walking back and I suppose we have to laugh about how these things happen when you're travelling. And um don't know, maybe we've got an ice cream or something to pick ourselves up. So we're now in the city centre, we're in the plaza, the main plaza of Cabio. You see we've got a beautiful big church in the middle. Still really beautiful. And um those are nice restaurants here. But the thing that really caught my eye was they've got a, a Mustang. She's like, I'm sure people in North America don't care about this, but for me this is one of the coolest cars I've seen. GT Mustang. I think it's a GT Mustang. GT 500 it says on the side, but absolutely cool as fuck. As you can see in the background, the little plaza. Those are the little shops and that selling postries, with cakes and ice creams and whatnot. Quite ironic <laughs> that we just had the worst meal ever because we've just walked past about fucking 20 amazing restaurants, but that's what happens. We're going to walk in the church, so... Spanish for don't talk. Ah. That is cheesecake, cheesecake de Arequipe con mora. And um, for those who don't know, Arequipe is kind of like back in Scotland, we'd call it, we'd call it caramel flan or dulce de leche, they call it in South America as well. But it's fantastic, and this is the first time I've ever seen Arequipe on cheesecake, so I had to buy it. It's um, really bizarre for us being here. We were walking around the plaza. We were in Bolivia about two and a half years ago. It was a little town of it we did a day trip to. And I could swear this is the exact same town. It's it's bizarre. I mean we're obviously thousands of miles more north in South America but it was the exact same plaza, everything was getting in the same position. Even walking about the streets it's it's really strange. I mean it's every single um, every single town in South America has got a plaza. It's got a plaza in the middle, so that's not strange, but it's just kind of bizarre how similar the layout of the streets and everything is. Anyway, it's getting crowded here. Better finish off my cheesecake. Wherever there is cheesecake, there's dogs. This wee guy's been sitting here for a while looking at me. I don't know if I should give him something or not. You want something to eat? You hungry? Huh? Yes, I am. <laughs> good, good, good impersonation. <laughs> right, I'll leave you some, okay? <laughs> Look at that. Look how much he wants this cake. Look at how much he wants this cake. Okay, right, okay, I won't tease you anymore. Right, you want it? Okay, let's see. It's going to eat at the back. Oh, no, come here, but he's trying to eat the paper. Tiene mucha hambre. You 
Was this terrible? Yeah. Who wee doggy was hungry. Should really be going out and buying him meat or buying him something that's good for him, but said I'm, I'm probably giving him something that's going to put him in a coma. Oof. You were nasty. <laughs> it's my turn. No, I nada más. <laughs> it's my turn to feed him. <laughs> See, you can't trust the Colombians to feed you. You have to wait for the Scottish guy to feed you. Trust the gringo to feed you. <laughs> oh, I feel bad for the dogs. I hate when I hate when you walk around and you see dogs that are, well dogs are dogs that aren't being fed. Do you have not, there's not anything. Okay. He, he does think he realises that there's no more food. No, I'm just eating the scraps now. Okay, so that's my Nice sign to go. So we're just heading back now. We're on a little bus to come to the north of Bogota. Took about an hour or so. And we're getting, we have to get that another bus. Not sure if it's this one, but back from the north of Bogota to the south of Bogota. Takes like another hour. And then it's like 20 or 30 minutes to walk back to the apartment. So it's been a good day, but I'm very tired. Hope you enjoyed the little clips of the day out. And any questions about the town, leave a comment below. I'll try and do some more cuts for you soon, but until then, take care. Bye.